at our recent town trash day, so we threw away this old Craftsman 10 inch chainsaw model 358.34550 and there's no website on it anywhere and it says made in the USA so that's definitely not new. Oh and also it's funny the next person that was uh, in line with their truck full of trash they uh, dropped off still quality bar and chain lubricant so I took that too because well I mean it goes together. Probably the same vintage too. This thing looks like it's been lost in a barn for a while. Honestly, it doesn't seem so much like oil as just like, I don't know, like chicken shit. She looks pretty good. Oh, I thought this rubber cap had a, like a dimpled top. That's just all the grime on it. That's funny. Uh... So I did run this and it, it it ran really hard the motor seemed fine just as soon as there is no oil and this is yeah it's kind of just needs a little cleaning so yeah whenever i ran it it was just really heavily loaded down I bet this was slowly leaking oil, as chainsaws tend to do, or at least the crappy ones that I've had, and they were just kind of getting everywhere. Let's run it real quick, just to see how it does. Yeah, so before it, it would just really like, and so it would, it would just like, it was really, there was a lot of um, tension. A friction, I guess you could say. So that one's a short one. Oh, hey, we can take off the handle. I really like how that's keyed, whatever the term is, so it doesn't rotate. I've had too many things where the handles are, they'll just rotate off. It's really crappy. Oh, I get it. So these long ones are actually going through. Going directly into here. That's nice. Okay, so I can actually clean that up too. Oh! Ha! 1982. 12. 82. So is that December 1982? I imagine they made these gearing up for the following spring and uh, summer sales. That's nice to know. The more I take it apart, the cleaner I can get it. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of cobwebs and sawdust in here. It would be best just to clean them out. Nice. That looks really clean. Oh, look at that. So it is. This plastic's gotten a bit hard though, so I wouldn't want to push it too hard. Yeah, this plastic's kind of hardened up. Oh. It's a good thing we did that because that hose. Oh. Yeah, so that wouldn't have done anything. Yeah. 
and this grease has completely disintegrated it's no longer on here and it's all smeared across the edges of the container again 1282 so 1982 well this is nice the container still is good even though it doesn't really squish much anymore it should still be okay I have some replacement gas line which should be good enough for that and then we can put some high temperature grease on there and you know what that might actually help the um, the motor run even better if we get some oil on there I went to my dad's house and got the uh, fuel line that we can use to replace that but then I also noticed there's another hole here and a piece of foam on the inside this might be a form of one-way valve Hey. Yeah, that's not coming out. All right, so that was just a tube going directly in there. It's odd. But whenever somebody presses down on this, the air has to come from somewhere to come back in. So I think that might be a one-way check valve to allow it to fill back up, but I'm not sure how that would work. Well, that went on there easily, but I worry that it's a bit too stiff for this. I guess that'll work. <sighs> It'd be nice to have another twist in that though. I did kind of scorch it there, but it's still in one piece. And it's only cosmetic really. But making it snake around means that it's not pulling on this too hard. And uh, it should work. Oh my god, there's a second hole. What? Makes no sense. What on earth are these holes for? So I'm rather confused. I do not think that pushing it this much would be enough to really push it all the way through the the uh, line and have an air bubble come back up to replenish it. However, the top does have this odd little cone thing in there. So that might actually function as a bit of a one-way valve. But then these two outlets, I don't know what they're for. There wasn't any other tubing in here, unless it just fully disintegrated. And <clears throat> I don't think that there was any evidence that those had hoses going to lubricate any of this stuff. So I'm just going to plug it up for now with hot glue, which is easy to remove. Actually really, really easy to remove. Later on, we can go over this and figure it out. Bearings look a tiny bit dry, so I just get a little dab of grease. 
tiny little bit it should help. Even if just lower the volume this thing makes. film of grease seems nice. As for this motor, it does feel a little bit stiff, so let's see if a little bit of sewing machine oil and the bushings will help. It's probably a bearing down there, but oh yeah, that is a bearing. Hmm. Well. If it gives too much issue, we can always open it back up, but it does feel better. So it's good. But the motor looks fine, so not too much of a problem. And then, let's see. This shaft is supported by this bearing as well. So let's move some grease into there. Okay, so that seems like it's coated around pretty well.
grab that, this little hole right here that goes all the way through was originally a uh, chain guard for your hand, but those tend to disappear, especially whenever old timers own them. The best thing's about done. Oh well. It is odd that this is not a uniformly shaped one though. It kind of curves more this way and then it's more abrupt on that angle. It's almost like an aerofoil shape. There isn't too much junk inside of it so that's good. like 30 year old bar and chain oil. I presume it would still be good. Oh, that is black. That might be bad. Who knows? have difficulties with these fill mechanisms so yeah there was evidently something missing from that or this entire thing might just be broken that's cool this thing has like a tensioner thing Seems kind of gimmicky to me. Most of the chainsaws that I have, you just have to hold it out and that tensions it. Now that that thing's not working, I'll go ahead and put some oil on here. And hopefully that can help. happy with that. Although I definitely will be looking at properly fixing that mechanism for oiling because it would be nice to have the oiler working even though it is a bit old and stiff. So it was built better than a lot of newer ones but it still had some defects like for instance the little oil bladder is a bit weak and um the motor smells like burning brushes, but most of those old motors seem to do that, like my old circular saw and such. I'm not sure if it's just the motor design or the fact that they're old, but even whenever you clean off the the brushes and all that, it still it still smells like some type of ozone. And that's about as clean as a chainsaw deserves to be. A chainsaw deserves to be covered in sawdust. So. Let's go cover in sawdust. I don't know why I'm filming this, but I'm going outside. Just a piece of oak. That's for sure. Oh. Okay, maybe 
Maybe it's not too bad. They're just weird. That oak was kind of hard, so. Hmm. Let's see. You know what? I am thinking too big. This would be really good for all this little crap. But I don't want to mess up my uh, nicer chainsaws on. These annoying little things have been sticking up since 2018 when I first cut them down. But I never actually come around and chop them up. It does make walking back here a little pain in the butt. That's what I was hitting up on. Little bits of the fence still back here. Thrown into everything. So this will be my shit chainsaw. Because, I, I mean, okay, I cut through fences anyway, but I, mean, I don't care that much about metal. Probably should, but oh well. bushes just aren't really nice. I'd rather have trees back here. So I won't be trimming many trees with this, but I will be trimming those and little sprouts and such. Can you guys spot the poison ivy? Eastern poison ivy to be specific. Right there. That is eastern poison ivy. And I have been working on eradicating that with clipping. I've clipped about 400 plants in the past week and it seems to be doing a very good job. Pretty much all the vines, all the poison ivy systems in the area seem to have gone in shock and are trying to sprout up as many little sprouts as they can. So if I just keep coming back and clipping them, they will go extinct in the area, which is nice. This is a nice little free tool that can possibly be better, but it'll be nice for little things like that. And it's actually pretty light, so it won't, be, it won't be hard to carry around. Thankfully, this is a universal motor, so I think it could run off of DC pretty well. I just need to fix the switch, because the switch is expecting AC, and it wouldn't handle switching DC very well. Alright, I'm running through like five extension cords to get out here, but oh well. Now, I know technically this isn't our property. This is the town's property, like the property lines a few feet this way. But I still feel some ownership over these bushes. And I hope they don't just decide to bulldoze them someday. That'd be a shame because it gives, it gives them my shade. But this like bush thing that's overgrown in here, it's been a annoying for years. a 
first time I'd ever actually caught, so I could actually pull it. Uh, these things are good, like 10 years old, I think. Let me buy the rings. I want to see. It's difficult to tell, but it looks like nine or ten rings. So, that was pretty good. Not really sure how to end the video, but as far as a, a free chainsaw goes, it def definitely has some use. I never really thought I'd need a small chainsaw, but I also never thought to finish cutting that down. Although I think a couple years ago there was a bird's nest in there, and I don't, I don't like messing with bird's nests. Well, sh sure, I mainly it is because it's like bad to hurt birds, but also because birds are real assholes whenever you mess with their nests. So there's a good reason just to let them go. <laughs> but yeah, this can find some use. Probably sharpen it though. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.